The news of Gore Downey's death came as CBC Radio's Q was about to go to air. Tom Power, he's the host of Q, and joins me now. Quite a day, Tom. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, a really sad day. You know, I think a lot about Gord's family today. You know, um, I, you know, I, I know what it's like to lose a parent. People in this country who know what it's like to lose a parent. And it's one thing to lose a Canadian icon, but I, I think about his children today. I think about his family who are just, just missing their dad. It's a sad day. What did he mean to you? I mean, so much. Uh, Gordani, when I was when I was a kid, I went to Mile One to see him and Sarah Harmer, and I think up to that point, I'd only really ever seen like you know uh, meatloaf and air supply like shows that would come to Newfoundland, which you know weren't that many to be honest. And uh, when they would come and put off this big show and, and treat us like we were anywhere else in the country and, and, and talk to us and put off these big beautiful concerts, and it was the first time I think I understood how much power a live performance can really have. I'll never forget it. He did, they did poets, and then I said that's the song I heard on the cool. radio, and it, 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 it floored me. I did got you to, meet him? Yeah, I got to know Gord a couple of times. He was very kind to me. I mean, I think when I started at the CBC, I, I, I might have had a bit of an in, inferiority complex that maybe hasn't gone really away. Um, but I was trying to, I was like, I don't know, I'm doing the show every day. I was doing a morning show, and he came up to me at a Lou Reed tribute show, and he said, hey, you're, you're Tom Power. And I went like, oh, you know, <laughs> I could not believe you're this. You're going down. I can't here. believe you're talking. You know, like, yeah. And I don't think he yeah. asked. I said, oh, yeah, sure I am. And he said, you know, I listened, I listened to your show, and, 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 and thank you for it. And he quoted something I said back to me, you know, and he, it, was, it, was, it was really beautiful. I got to meet him a couple of times more. Uh, I booked him at a, a festival uh, I used to book in Newfoundland, the Newfoundland Labrador Folk Festival. And I remember afterwards we were, we were spending time together and there was a big line of about 30, 40 people outside waiting to go in to see him. Uh, and, uh, you know, it had been raining for a while and they'd been out there. And I said, you know, someone came to me, they said, do you want to tell him to go away? And I said, Gord, what do you want to do here? And he goes, well, what do you think we should do, Tom? And I said, maybe we should go out and see him. He goes, of course we will. Of course we will. And we went out and he signed for hours. So he was spectacularly successful he was a rock star but it seems all day we've been hearing stories like that that it was he was a great musician but he was also an incredible man that yeah. he was like a mentor to practically every canadian musician that you hear well and also like just a he had such a tremendous respect for Everybody. When he showed up in Newfoundland that time, I'll never forget it. There were sound techs and lighting rig techs who worked with him on one gig at Memorial Stadium in St. John's, which mm. is now shut down 20 years ago. Well, it's now a grocery store. 20 years ago, and he remembered them by name. He didn't have someone, you know, Veep style whispering their names in his ear. He, he, he remembered every single one of them because he respected the work that they did. He respected his audience, and he respected his audience enough. That's part of his success. I mean, he respected his audience enough to sing the songs he wanted to sing, to make the art he wanted to make, knowing that they, they'd understand. The New York Times today was saying that he was kind of he was something that America has never had that he was Bruce Springsteen <laughs> Michael Stipe and yeah. Bob Dylan all rolled into one and yet the hip never really broke through there I mean I know that he would be asked about that all that does it does it matter it does I don't think it matters at all I think you know when you ask Gordani to say I, I get asked about that all the time and I think it's absurd we've had success on our own terms I've had the success on my own terms and that's the only success that matters to me you know ultimately I, I, I don't think it necessarily mattered to them I mean again they made the art that they wanted to make and they didn't get 12 million people watching them uh, on the CBC on their final concert because they pandered to 12 million people. It's because they won 12 million people over with the art that they wanted to make. And if people didn't get it somewhere else in the world, that didn't really matter to him because Gord wasn't going to compromise. And I think the greatest example of that was when they played Saturday Night Live. Big opportunity for them. When they, was that? I think it was Dan Aykroyd was hosting, so it was probably in the late 90s. And, uh, he, or 80s, maybe. Yeah, well, no, I, think, <laughs> I think it was the late 90s. And they got up and they played this beautiful beautiful, artful music. They played Grace 2 and Nautical mm. Disaster, and they, they stood by the songs that they wanted to play. They, they, they stood by the art that he, he, he wanted to make, and, and they, they didn't compromise, and they won an awful lot of people over. So, ultra-Canadian, and yet you're a guy from Newfoundland, he's a guy from Kingston, and somehow Canadian, but not too cliched. Well, I don't think Gord... I, I, I read an article one time that said that perhaps we put too much of an identity uh, of a Canadian on Gord that Gord would not necessarily put on himself. We imbue too many of our ideas of Canadianity on Gord that perhaps Gord wouldn't. When I was growing up in Newfoundland, I mean, I didn't really have a lot of affection or really, I didn't really understand the whole maple syrup uh, plaid shirt thing, you know. I, I came from a different place and Gord's music made me understand what the best of Canada was, which was acknowledging our traditions and acknowledging our culture, and, but acknowledging that new people are coming and that people have been here far longer than people like me. I think that what Gord did, and I've been speaking to, remember, the 50% of the people watched 
Gord Danny's final concert with the Tragically Hip. Of Canadians, yeah. Yeah, 50%, yeah. 50%, 50 of them didn't. So I think that what I've been talking to a lot of people, and new Canadians and, and people who don't come from Gord's background, who don't know Gord, are learning about him, and they're learning really what the best of Canada can really be. Well, he always said, you got to make a difference. He made a difference, and uh, thanks, Tom. It was it, really nice to remember. Listen, I, I, I want to say my condolences to his family, and, and thanks for having me on. Thank you.